Welcome back to the channel folks, Mr. Age here for a video discussing very, very early Prometheus script concept stuff. So this comes to us from uh, HN Entertainment between them and an interview with Carlos Juante. Now, Carlos is a creature designer and a concept artist on uh, several alien projects, Prometheus and Alien Covenants, and he has revealed some interesting information which previously wasn't really around uh, I mean, there's been very early Prometheus scripts floating about for a really long time, Alien Engineers and Alien Genesis being two. Now, what he's revealed seems to predate all of that, and uh, from, from what I can gather, it seems to be the very, very initial concept uh, that Prometheus was born from. So, in this interview, he stated the following. When we met, I had a script in my hand, and it was not good. It would have been like Aliens, like an Aliens movie. It wasn't Alien, it would have been an Aliens film. There was an army group there fighting Aliens with all of them getting killed. It was a shoot 'em up bang bang film with Aliens in it. It was really bad, but I knew that wasn't going to be the script and Ridley had just gotten hired. The art department got hired on. I was living up in North California at the time, so they flew me down to meet with Ridley for a couple of days. And so I'm in the room with Ridley, I sit down, and he starts telling me the story and the new script, and it's way better. I mean, that previous script I had read had nothing to do with what he was telling me. So it was interesting to see that Prometheus was going to be a Aliens film rather than uh, what it was, what it turned into, this philosophical exploration of humankind's origins. Um, would this have been good? Would this have been bad? It's very difficult to say. I mean, it's all well and good Carlos saying it was a bad script. Uh, you're an artist. You know, I look, I appreciate your opinion, um, but it's all, that's what it is, right? It's opinion. So it's very difficult to say, uh, but obviously it never got made. So logic would dictate that it probably wasn't all that good. Uh, and definitely not the direction that they wanted to go in. But I would say that there's probably some remnants of that in Prometheus. I mean, there are mercenaries actually in Prometheus. Uh, the hired guns on the uh, the exploration. Numi Rapace's character, Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, actually turns to them and says, you know, we don't need the, uh, the weapons in the film. So I guess there's some remnants of that. Uh, but obviously it's kind of you know, disappeared along with the new script. Now, Carlos was actually asked about his time working on Alien Covenant, and he revealed some snippets of information, again, kind of early script details uh, about what happened to Elizabeth Shaw, and just some alternative bits and pieces of what could have been. He stated the following. In the first version of what was called Paradise, or Prometheus 2, Shaw was alive. They find her, and she's been hiding from David the whole time, and she helps them escape. I told Ridley, my wife and mother-in-law, who are strong characters themselves, they loved the Shaw character and the actress, Numi Rapace, more than any other characters in the film. And they're not science fiction people, but they liked the film because of Numi. I think it was a studio call as to why she didn't return. What a shame. That's very interesting to hear and does actually echo some previous statements we had heard. It was, well, well I had previously heard that it was a studio call, but then there was also some rumours and rumblings that it was between two of them. It was either hire Numi Rapace or hire Catherine Waterston. Obviously, Catherine Waterston has now been in quite a few uh, movies here and there. This tends to be what Hollywood does, is they will latch on to someone which they believe is going to be the, you know, the next big rising star. Catherine Waterston was that. She hasn't turned out to actually be that rising star, uh, even though her agent has obviously, you know, got her quite a lot of big gigs at this point in time, but she just hasn't, she hasn't uh, developed into the star which everyone thought she was. So bad move from Fox. They definitely should have kept Numi Rapace on board and just scrapped the idea of Catherine Waterston. Anyone could have played that role; it wouldn't have mattered. There was absolutely no charisma there. It was somewhat of a, uh, a charisma vacuum in Covenant with uh, Catherine Waterston's character. So anyway, Carlos also goes on to reveal some other bits and pieces of information, and he says, So in the first version of Covenant, called Paradise, she was hiding in the catacombs from David under the city, and the story was that on her trip to the homeworld, she got lonely, and she had David hanging outside the ship. 
She didn't want anything to do with him, but she still had to talk to him. Eventually, she ends up bringing his body in and reattaching him as they become friends during this trip. He ends up having affections for her in a friendship way. So they end up going to the city and that's when David looks at her and tells that story. Do you trust me? Do you trust that I love you and everything I'm going to do from this point on is because of you and that's all to protect you? She looks at him and says, okay, yes, I do. And then he turns around and kills all the engineers on the planet. It's his own twisted way of vengeance for her. He kills the planet. She is like, hey, I wanted to talk to these people, but too late, the whole planet is polluted now and everyone on the planet dies. Super interesting, I guess. Uh, it really is snippets of, you can see how the story developed anyway into Alien Covenant. I wouldn't say any of that would have been particularly great. I mean, it's almost comedic to think of David, either his head or his body just floating through space out the back of the back door of one of these uh, engineer ships. I mean, how ridiculous would that have looked? They really would have had to have designed that in a way, you know, so that the audience just didn't burst out laughing. Um, I do, I do like the the sort of twisted nature of David coming through there, saying, you know, do you trust me? Do you trust that I love you and everything I'm going to do from this point on is because of you? Uh, and then just murders everyone. Uh, it's kind of what we thought, you know, from watching Alien Covenant initially, that it was some kind of twisted vengeance and stuff like that, and maybe it even was still at that point in time and obviously since developed into what we now know uh, was the reason why he murdered everyone on the planet. So again, interesting. And it is interesting as well, Carlos does state that, you know, they were engineers again, or at least, well, no, he does, yeah, kills all the engineers on the planet. So he is still saying that they are engineers there, or at least in that early draft of the script anyway. Now, obviously, we saw quite a while back some, uh, some creature designs which were supposed to be in Alien Covenant. Now, this was uh, sadly one of the things which were cut uh, and changed and reworked. It's something which I really, really liked, but Carlos did actually elaborate on that. Now, basically, David was going to have a whole zoo of twisted creatures and animals that he had just spliced together and just made from loads and loads of different things. It was supposed to be kind of like an evolutionary thing, I guess. Uh, and Carlos states, but in that version, we had this pit bull kind of alien dog named bug that David had running around loose on the engineer planet and then he had created these meerkats and that's why I called the little white things the alien covenants neomorphs meerkats because that's what they remind me of from the old story David in the old script had an army of these meerkats that was super violent they were not normal they would open their mouths to reveal that all their teeth were individually attached to a finger so they had this sort of hand of teeth inside of their mouth a precursor of things to come showing the projecting mouth thing already starting to happen in David's creations there so I guess look I mean that's fine the the design aspect is pretty cool. Uh, I mean, we, we'd we already seen the, the kind of projection of the inner jaw from the Deacon. So I don't really understand how that would have factored into anything from this. Because uh, the Deacon was just the Deacon uh, and born as was and still had the, uh, the projecting inner jaw type thing. Um, interesting. I mean, again, almost near comedic. You know, David's got an army of meerkats. When you really simplify the story down, some of this stuff just seems super, super dumb. It's still an interesting thing to discuss here and there. Uh, it's such a shame that Alien Covenant didn't land as big as it could have been. It's such a shame that they reworked it so, so, so much. Uh, and a shame that what we got was pretty much putting the franchise on ice, I guess. So there you go. This was taken from avpgalaxy.net and obviously their source was HN Entertainment and the, uh, the Carlos Fuente interview. Uh, it's interesting. It genuinely is interesting. So let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. As always though guys, if you are new here, please do hit subscribe. And if you want to stay up to date on everything that I do post here, smash that bell notification icon. Also, do go and give me a follow over on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. H Reviews. And if you like what I do here, hit like and give the video a share. As always, I've been Mr. H. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.